just love that you topped in. Number nine. This is episode number nine, guys. D-Pins, top companies and projects. And you heard right there from the Wolf account. There is an AMA in the second hour, so you can stay tapped in. There's a lot going on. We got New York, NFT NYC, and most of you are either there, on your way there, wishing you were there, or living vicariously through the people that are there. But we're in the space right now to tap in with what's going on in the latest. So first, uh, you know, depending on connection issues, who's dropping in, I want to give a big shout out to everyone that's here. Uh, another week with us. We appreciate you greatly. Uh, make sure if you have comments, questions, thoughts to put a chat comment down in the bottom right that little chat box share the space that helps wolf and all the speakers and listeners getting more people into deep and there's some big news i'm gonna drop that big news that i just found out some uh really an interesting deep in news that just came out but first let's see if we got uh the co-host with the most he is from peak network and deep in daily and if you say deep in or rwa three times usually deep in deep in deep in he appears and here he is scott what's up buddy Yo, yo, what's up, everybody? Good uh, coming in from New York. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, it's uh, good to f- that, you know, we still doing it, even though we all out of town. That's how diehard we are for D-Pin. It doesn't matter what city we taking the show on the road. Uh, appreciate you holding it down, uh, Michael and Charlie, for us, too. Well, uh, yeah, real quick with the news, um, IOTEX uh, ended up raising $50 million to expand their ecosystem um, so, yeah, shout out to, to all the IOTech fam over there. Uh, the next thing I, I'm really proud of, um, D-Telly, uh, which is like Web3 video streaming. So you don't have to like pay AWS crazy ass bills to run videos, you know, on apps and websites. Um, they're integrating uh, with Peak uh, and leaving Arbitrum to uh, do Web3 video streaming on the decentralized side. Uh, so, yeah, man, shout out to the D-Telly and, and that whole team. Um, yeah, and just like, you know, don't be sold on one thing. Like, you know, like all this stuff is going to be interoperable, you know, wormhole, you know, maybe not like in the next six months, but, you know, everything sooner or later is going to be able to talk to each other, all these devices. So, you know, don't don't be just bullish on one chain. Kind of keep the door open, what everyone's doing from literally Alboran um, to peak. So, yeah, just uh, keep an open mind. Um, another uh, great thing, uh, shout out to our, our boys from uh, Gaiman. Um, they actually linked up with Aether uh, to, to a collaboration extending GPU D-Pin for Compute Powder, or Power, Power. Uh, so yeah, man, shout out to both of those squads. Uh, you know, really hardworking team. So really cool to see two people come together. And like we always say every week, the rising tide lifts all the D-Pin boats in the marina. So yeah. Um, you know, two people could do something similar. You come together and it's like Voltron, you know. So um, I love the collaboration that I'm seeing and, and hopefully we'll see more of that. Uh, but, yeah, man, great to be here. Excited to, to get cooking. And Scott comes in cooking right from NFT NYC. Keep us updated there. As I said, we got a great show today. It's two hours because we got a second hour AMA. You're going to want to stick around for that. But before we get that, we're going to crush this first hour. And we have the man. He is a recovering Silencio addict and a deep end daily intern. Will is in the house. What's up, Will? Hey, how's it going, everyone? My name is William. I am uh, I am everything that matters when it comes to deep <laughs> the Silencio network. <laughs> hey, how's everyone doing? Anyone else in New York City? What's happening, guys? He sounded like an AI there. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> exactly. I was going to have to change his intro moving forward to the AI man. Uh, what's up? Well, Poppy, you just popped in. So what's going on, Poppy? How are you today? I'm just, um, I'm chilling, man. Just meeting after meeting. And yeah, I just had a couple uh, a couple good meetings today. I had one actually with the, with the D-Pen project as well, too, about a potential advisory role to help with some marketing and um, some brand exposure and stuff. So just like I said, slowly learn about D-Pen, just getting some exposure to it. And, um, you know, just that's why I'm here is to learn and, and to find uh, 
the right projects to to align with and to invest in in the space because I'm hearing more and more of the KOLs that I'm connected with are starting to list their different RWA and DPIN projects that they're thinking are going to come through in the next narrative. They're putting you know DPIN up there with gaming and AI in the space, so um, that's pretty exciting. If people missed out on gaming, uh, you know, over the past three or four months, uh, DPIN's uh, you know the 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 next one to get into. So absolutely, let's dive into that after we get through our. Uh introductions for some of our other speakers ice is in the house ice how are you doing today you know i'm doing real uh i'm doing real good man i uh yeah you know i, I consider myself one of the greatest uh, spaces hosts on x actually and um i, I i'm really just following william's lead here because william honestly he's just one of the greatest like deep in like daily interns ever dude i, I love all the deep in stuff that him and scott are doing and uh, of course you michael as well um but yeah i'm, I'm just really stoked to get in the conversations today guys this is quite impressive. But before we go back to that, we got to say what's up to the RWA King. Ray is here. Ray, how are you today? Yo, what's up, awesome people? I'm doing fantastic, although I do have a New York-shaped hole in my heart. I am not there, but I know we got Scott, we got Will up there. Uh, so we, we have it held down. So stoked to be learning from the best here on the deep end front. I got you held down on RWAs, but, you know, the... Uh, the student can become the master, and the master can become the student. So uh, pour into me and teach me what you guys know. Let's learn some deep ends. Love it. Love it. All right. So uh, you've heard everyone here is already, uh, you know, either in New York, thinking about New York, and we've got a nice group of speakers. If you want to come up, make sure to request and join us if you have some any deep in information, your thoughts. Uh, we're going to run through some stuff I want to just tap into quickly as we uh, further what Scott dropped with the news on IOTEX and their $50 million, uh, raise. Uh, the venture capital firm, firms that uh, were participating in that at the lead were Foresight Ventures, s and Capital, and Borderless Capital, as well as Future Mo Money Group. Borderless Capital, if you remember, they invested, uh, and we announced that last week, with Peak. So they're they're pretty full on when you think about deep end. It's just something to pay attention to, the, the kind of capital that's coming in and flowing, and where is it coming from. You pay attention to that, you can kind of see where it's going next. They also, just to note, that $50 million that IoT has raised, they say, is going to go to investment in deep in projects building on IOTech. So uh, good to know. And as well as uh, funds being allocated towards long-term staked IOTICs. So when you think about it, they're going to give back to the stakers and then they're going to invest in the entire ecosystem. So it sounds like a win-win from a deep in space and it's a significant sum, $50 million. So uh, big news this week. Right off the bat, we had big news last week. We got big news. It feels like there's big news every week. I'm curious, as we're here right now, is anybody kind of found something new or different this past week in the deep end sector or something exciting? I want to open it up since we're not doing a guest in our first hour. Uh, we have a little bit more freedom to talk about anything inside of the network. Yeah, hey, Michael, I like the golf one, bro. The uh, I'll get the let me get the name of it again, but yeah, I saw <clears throat> we saw him at Eat Denver, but um, I think they're already like partnered with the with the PGA, and yeah, it paid, pretty much like takes track of all your game with a sensor in, in the handles of your club, and that just is almost like wing bits where um, it's just going to bring a lot of people like and anyone knows golfers, you know, like, as a hobbyist or fucking savage. Uh, and it's going to be real cool to all of a sudden hop in a Twitter space and there's going to be just golfers talking about deep in, right? Where we didn't have to like onboard them with wallets. We didn't have to like, you know, tell them how to swap. They just literally playing the game they like to play. And, you know, for, like we said, uh, uh, on, on race space with RWA is just fortifying things, right? We ain't trying to change the whole legacy system in a week, but we just, we're just here to fortify these systems. So yeah, if golf is doing it. Think about like uh, Gaiman, you know, they have those trackers on the on the Red Bull racers, you know, when they do those races like in the middle of Canada. So, I mean, we could go on and on and on, but I'm really, really excited to see like deep. Well, I don't want to say deep in, we'll just say decentralized sensors with uh, within sports, right? Because we, we, we saw video games um, with the soul racing. And yeah, I'm just really seeing these new integrations that like we had no idea because uh, we know we cover a lot telecommunications um we cover you know co compute power but i'm ready to see these like new new combined sensor 
uh, deep in projects come out. As a golfer myself, I love it. Yeah, you talked you touched on this last week, and that's a, a really nice opportunity. It would be super cool to see the the golfers talking about the decentralized aspect. Uh, and so we're gonna have to track that one for sure. Any other uh, maybe new initiatives, new projects anyone has found, any updates that anyone wants to share? I mean, I've got some myself that I'm happy to, to go with, but I want to open it up to make sure that anyone that was, you know, grinding or cooking on anything has a chance to share it. I just got my phone back from ICE, so I guess I'll, I'll, uh, I'll add on to this. Um, <laughs> uh, what's, what's going on, guys? But, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know. To Scott's point, the golfing one's definitely really interesting, and I think that I think that we're going to see a lot more like developments when it comes to just IoT devices uh, being utilized for you know these deep end networks and whatnot. Like I know there's lots of GPU computes coming out, and so I'm really happy companies like or you know I guess protocols companies whatever you want to call them. I'm really I'm really happy that companies like Diamond and Aether are kind of teaming up because I feel like they'll be able to solve a lot more issues and like take a lot more market share in that sense like together as opposed to being being separate. Um, and I just, I, I'm i always hearing about these, like, new, oh, yeah, like, we're a deep in AI GPU compute, and it's, like, I have to, like, sift through all this, like, you know, <laughs> all of the, you know, oh, let's just slap a deep in label on it. Um, I, but I don't have necessarily anything new for this week. I just, I was I was thinking of the golf one as well, but I, the only the only new ones I can really think of are just, they seem like, you know, kind of shills for, uh, for the AI deep in, like, GPU compute stuff, so I'm not going to talk about those. Yeah, for sure. And how about how about what everyone is using? You know, when we were, as Charlie and Wolf said at the start here, this is episode number nine. When we started, we started talking about some of the more uh, high level deep ends, the ones that everybody is using. We've you know we've had Hive Mapper, we've had Helium, we've talked about the different projects from Wingbits to to uh, Demo uh, to Grass. Has anyone had any different feelings over the last week on using these different uh, projects? Has anyone found anything new about them? Any updates there? Like, for example, I'm pretty uh, interested in, in always watching Demo's growth, which you can see right inside the app, I think is pretty cool. Um, you know, I, I watch my grass rewards. Anything that you guys are kind of feeling that could help others listening or what you're seeing inside of these projects on a kind of day-to-day, week-to-week basis? Uh, all I'm going to say is that I, w- I, I, after using a lot of these different protocols and projects, I... I'm finding myself needing an application to manage all these applications. <laughs> I, I like. I, I wish there was like one place I could go to and like you know just check on the status of all of my all of my deep in progress or even activate those deep ends. Uh, for like instance, I wish I could just like go to one app and like use Silencio and Natix like together maybe to some degree and then check on my grass in that same app and then all that stuff. But yeah, I mean. Uh, besides that, like, no, I'm no, I have no new developments really in how I'm using these things. I'm just, I'm just noticing myself using them a lot more passively. So, like, Silencia, I'll just automatically start up when I'm walking outside, or if I go to like a venue real fast, I'll just check in really quickly. Uh, Grass is like the first thing I open when I start my computer. Um, what else was there? Natix. Yeah, every time I get on a drive, I just, I literally put my phone right there on the on the dashboard on my little mount, and I just start up a Natix like uh, session right then and there. So, yeah, man, that, I mean, I, I, I'm just finding myself needing, uh, again, like an app that can manage all of these maybe in, in just like one interface. Very cool. Yeah, I know. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Almost like you need to be able to aggregate them all into one place, make it easier, right? So you could do multiple things, multitasking inside. That's of the million dollar idea right there. <laughs> yeah, multitasking the aggregator inside of deep and makes a lot of sense hey let's welcome joe joe what's going on welcome to deep ends hey thanks for having me just Feeling did you great. have a did you have a, a thought or or anything inside of deep End you wanted to share uh not yet i'll work it into the conversation at hand fair enough yeah so if you're new we are taking uh, other speakers. You can come up today if, you're, if it's your first time, your second time, your last time dropping into deep ends. Uh, again, we're going two hours today because we're going to roll into an AMA that we have. Uh, and so, therefore, the first hour, 
We're changing it up a little bit. We know everyone is excited for what's going on in New York, in the city, and at CNYC. Have a good time. Make your connections. Share the lore and the love for decentralized physical infrastructure networks uh, and make those connections. But for now, we're just tapping into some of the projects we've talked about. I'm looking right now, making sure my grass is connected. William, you got me stoked to make sure to check that. Silencio and Nadix. If you're curious about any of these, you can put a comment in the bottom right chat box to let us know. We can share referral codes. Uh, more information to talk about him. Let me ask you, Ray. Ray, uh, because I know you're RWA, Ray, but when it comes to D-pins, is there one D-pin that you get excited mostly about or think about as like, wow, that's the one that I connect with? Yeah, no, great question. So this kind of gets into the, uh, is this a deep pin? This is a really great question for, for you guys, because I'm deep in the weeds for the RWAs, as you mentioned. Um, there is a protocol called the Open Forest Protocol. And as a card-carrying, certified, high-ranking, um, earning nerd, uh, that is right up my alley. These guys are the galaxy brains that are working on the technology to uh, basically transpose huge amounts of data. We're talking things like, hey, how wet is the soil within this 10 meet, square meter area? Um, What's the atmospheric pressure like? What about upcoming weather patterns? Uh, and parses all this data to actually get real-time, real-world trends about that given geography. Because, I mean, we're all citizens of the world here. We know that uh, we may have the similar temperature and kind of air pressure in eastern North Carolina compared to, like, Argentina. could be similar, but you're not going to have the same long arc stuff. So these guys are creating incentive networks for that sort of stuff. Um, and naturally, it has that undercurrent of healing the planet, helping local ecology, and giving people who are otherwise just doing agricultural stuff. You know, we all need to eat. It gives them another source of income, essentially, by making this data more actionable. So I'm track an OFP, Open Forest Protocol. I like it. Open Forest Protocol. That's a new one that we haven't touched on, and we're adding it to the list for future conversations. Uh, Poppy, you said you like to learn a lot in these spaces. What have you learned by being in these spaces with us? Um, yeah, so, I mean, just from the very beginning, um, really the basics, honestly, um, Actually being able to tell the difference between, you know, the RWA aspect and seeing that there's offshoots that are starting to happen from RWA is really cool. And, you know, my first exposure was to get grass and I didn't really understand in the beginning. And then when I started to use, you know, the, the app, I started to realize, okay, like there's excess energy and excess compute or network energy or GPU and it can be actually harvested and we can actually take the data and tokenize it and give people the opportunity to maybe have more control over things that they're paying for and actually monetize that themselves. Like with Get Grass, it's, you know, we're paying, I'm paying like a hundred bucks a month for my service. You know, I can actually get some tokenized revenue from that, from, you know, just connecting the app itself or with like uh, uh, Solarium, for example, you know, they're, they're connecting into, um, you know, places in, uh, that have solar panels and, you know, harvesting energy there and giving people the opportunity to do that as well as, you know, other places, you know, say uh, in, in, the, um, in South America where they can, you know, tap into uh, large, um, you know, systems and renewable energy systems there as well too uh, for the B2B scale or the B2B model as well too. So companies can actually harvest as well. So I'm learning slowly and I, you know, I've been just like, Looking at the different, um, looking at the different models that are coming up and the different projects that are coming up in the chat that Scott brought me into, and I think like basically since I started, I've tapped into those two projects so far, and been getting my grass, and then have a potential you know deal with uh, with another project that I met with today to help them with some marketing. So I'm just learning through exposure, which has usually been the best for me um, and what I've done in the crypto space since the very beginning. But I have a pretty, pretty strong market and uh, like a, a pretty strong network. And basically, like I said, the KOLs that I know have been talking about it and got me even more interested in learning even more um, just so that I can position myself and understand and be ahead of the uh, ahead of the wave, basically. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. I think it's really good for new people dropping in to listen to think like, hey, even if it's your first uh, experience with Deepins, uh, you got to start somewhere, and that can lead to uh, you know a lot more. Uh, and just by doing, by, by participating, like you said, uh, so we appreciate you coming back uh, week in and week out and uh, sharing what you have learned and what you're going, uh, you know, doing forward. So really cool to hear, um, guys. Let's remember this is Wolf Web Three. Uh, we are doing Deepins, even though 
a lot of people are at NFT NYC. So with that, make sure if you're in here, make sure you're following not just the Wolf Web 3 account, turn those notifications on so you don't miss some of the best spaces in the world across industry. Uh, give all the speakers a follow. They're here to help you uh, in, in provide valuable information. And of course, if you're listening and you have questions, you can come up and speak, but you could also just drop a question or comment in the right box. Joe, what you got? Yeah, so I want to uh, piggyback off of what Poppy said there. Uh, get grass. I've been hearing a lot about this project. I have, you know, I never got into it. I should. I really should be, but uh, that's something I'll put on my to-do list. But a lot of these decentralized compute projects, I'm really starting to like. They're really starting to innovate. And that's where we've seen a lot of people doing the speculative mining or for, you know, basically you mine it, you hold it, and you watch your gains grow. And uh, one of the ones I'm hearing most about, uh, other than Get Grass, I've heard quite a bit about that. The other one I'm hearing that is supposed to be really hot up and coming is IONet. It's IO.net. And this was brought to my attention by uh, Deep in Connection, Brad, one of my good friends, and it's something we're also going to start mining. It's GPU mineable, a decentralized AI platform. So something we'll look into, but certainly mine it for the sake of uh, diversifying and, and holding that token. So you, you're probably hearing it here first. Um, definitely something to take a look at if you have GPU rigs. And it's they, they tout a pretty simple setup there. Now, another one that I've uh, you know really been, I was the first one to talk about on YouTube and they've really punched through as of lately is XNet. So you're probably hearing about the, you know, mobile carriers, the um, basically telco partnerships. And XNet has been working very hard in that arena, specifically for the past, I believe it's year and a half, two years, working to get telecom partner roaming agreements where they, you know, the big telecom carriers or sometimes even the um, international carriers will pay for their customers to roam onto the Xnet network. Now, we have not seen too much headway in that arena just yet, the CBRS space. For those of you who don't know, CBRS is Citizens Broadband Radio Systems. And in 2018, here in the United States, they opened up a part of the cellular spectrum for individuals and enterprises to use that space uh, with... It's, it would be considered unlicensed. You need... And in an outdoor environment, you'd need more of a permit. You just have to uh, register with, uh, I, f I forget what the um, what that uh, entity is called. But uh, anyways, I, this was a big thing in 2018 in the, the wireless arena, what I work in as a network engineer. So a lot of indoor companies, uh, a lot of indoor deployments from different companies in the, in the cellular space and the... Uh, you know, ones that had previously been relying on Wi-Fi for their day-to-day -day production. So that was XNet's really uh, what they were born into. But where we seen the massive headway was with what's called Passpoint, a.k.a. Hotspot 2.0, which is uh, Wi-Fi, where a cellular company says, okay, we'll, we'll allow our customers to roam onto Wi-Fi that we approve of and offload their data and pay these companies. And XNet, this, this is not a new idea. This has been around for several years, and we've been waiting for someone in the crypto space to finally do that. And XNet really just, uh, by the, I would say, um, it was Russ Frominator, who's someone you may have seen on the space before, a genius dude, but um, by his advice, they just picked that easy fruit, uh, low-hanging fruit off the tree, and it's been an easy win, but they have a current partnership with AT&T. So they sell these wireless access points from Alta, $200 off the shelf, and uh, you could set one up. It's recommended that you set it up in a high traffic area, but if you set it up in a good location, after about 24 to 48 hours, AT&T's algorithm will approve that location and allow it to offload data. And... It, during uh, times of uh, high traffic, as in there's many people in one location, and let's say even during times of you know congestion, but maybe a signal isn't so good for the cellular, you'll see a lot of traffic offloaded out of these access points. And depending on the, 
the carrier and the agreement negotiated by um, whoever the entity is that entered into this agreement with them, in this case being Extent, they'll pay a certain amount of, of monetary money per gigabyte offloaded through Passpoint. And uh, I'm not going to disclose the amount that they pay Xnet. That's not my place to do so. However, for us who are currently participating in this and standing up these wireless access points, these are just regular Wi-Fi routers. Anyone can do it. We are getting 50 Xnet per gigabyte offloaded. Now, uh, someone do the math for me at... Um, Xnet's jumping between ten cents and fifteen cents at the moment. So, uh, fifty Xnet tokens. That's off the top of my head. What's that? Um, Joe, five dollars. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. L- let's 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 run that math in the background. Uh, Sorry, that's about that. okay. And, and let's. I want to make sure to get the the conversation still rolling here because I'm honestly, as the host, I'm a little lost listening at this point. To be honest. It's really informative, but I'm, I, I, it's gone pretty deep, so I gotta like circle on that for a minute here. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So the the whole point being here is that there are partnerships with the big telco carriers. One with AT and T that's already been ratified. I hear of others in the works with the two other major ones, and they already have smaller partnerships with uh, the smaller telcos, Cricket Wireless, and a few that I wouldn't be able yeah. to remember. Anyways, I apologize for taking over the stage like that, but. Xnet, big shout out to them for breaking through on a, you know, a concept that many of these other deep in wireless projects should have picked up on some years ago. Well, I think I think that the, the main point in the takeaway, which I think is really helpful, so I appreciate it, Joe, is Xnet. Need to look into that myself and anybody else in here that's listening can learn a little bit more there. We've actually, while we were getting a huge breakdown on Xnet, and I'm excited to, to dive deeper there, is uh, we've loaded the, sta- the stage here. I mean, uh, first off, shout out to Bonfire. Bonfire, what's going on? Thanks for joining us. Hey, guys. My name is Joshua Kagan. I'm the founder of Bonfire. I couldn't get in through my normal Twitter handle. Twitter locked me out, so apologies. I'm going through my company, Bonfire. Great to be here. I'm absolutely fascinated by Deepin. Um, you know, it reminds me of kind of almost like the third, a, a new wave of crypto where we had, you know, DEXs as a, as a killer app, and then we had, you know, DAOs and, and this new layer of decentralization um, could could be massive. I guess my question to the group, and I, I'm very new at this, uh, learning about deep end, so it's a genuine curiosity. You know, when when Bonfire launched, we our first asset, we were a real world asset tokenization platform for real estate, we did it as a DAO. And what we told our community was like, hey, it's like um, being part of a condo association, HOA, but, you know, digitally. And that's how we were able to entice people who, you know, might not have crypto backgrounds to get to onto our platform. You know, one of the obstacles we faced, though, was everything was done on Discord. There's a lot of things about Discord that isn't intuitive to non-crypto natives. So I guess my question to all of you is, what do you see as a killer application in DPEN? Like, what, what would be, like, the first application you see that could really entice non-native crypto people to be part of the ecosystem um, and you know what other and what potential barriers are there to entry um, as we as we think about you know unloading the next billion people into crypto? So thank you, everyone. Well, thanks for being here, Joe, uh, and the Bonfire account. You know we we host these spaces every every Wednesday, same time, same place. So make sure to set those notifications from the Wolf Web Three account to join us. We've gone over this kind type of conversation and question, uh, and, and continue to to iterate and, and innovate and learn around it. But I'll just quickly and i want to open it up to everybody else because dave has joined us brett is back uh and so we have a a really strong panel here that could also answer but you know just quickly uh you know i would just say for example a project or a protocol or network like demo that's where you can just drive your vehicle uh and be part of a decentralized uh movement network uh you know you've got silencio william loves to talk about that uh, that's just by sounds around the world uh, and having your phone. You've got Nadix where you can just drive your vehicle uh, and kind of uh, observe uh, what's around. Same thing with Hive Map or helping map roads. So these are different types of projects already going. Helium with your phone that can really receive and reach mass adoption. Uh, the the one thing that I would just quickly say, and then I'm going to pass it to Will and anybody else that wants to kind of answer and talk about this, is that 
the thing that stops any type of like, let's say, decentralized physical infrastructure network is quite honestly a centralized version of it, right? Like centralized power doesn't want decentralized power. Uh, and that kind of filters across the, the whole entire landscape in general, that idea. So that's usually, in my opinion, the forces that are kind of opposed uh, to de- the idea of decentralization. Uh, William, tap in at... No, thank you, Michael. Thank you. Um, I, I, and I will also add that, you know, these centralized powers, these centralized structures, they, they don't necessarily, they, it's not that they they can't or don't want to, I guess, but I I guess not wanting to is is correct, right? Because they, they, they don't make as much money off of it, right? Like a deep end's not going to generate as much revenue as like their centralized, you know, APIs and servers and whatnot, like compared to something like, uh, like Hive Map, for example, you know, there for, for Google Maps, like Google's not going to make much money off of a system like Hive Mapper, whereas they might make a ton more money on like a centralized, you know, version of that via their Google Maps, for instance. So they're not even incentivized to, to go down that route. So you're spot on there. Um, I guess on the topic of like onboarding people, uh, funny enough, like yesterday I, I was in Times Square with Ice and my brother and my fiance and the weather definitely didn't help. But um, I was just like trying to ask random people on the street about Silencio and about just like, you know, wanting to make money on their noise pollution. And uh, the, the rain definitely, <laughs> the rain and the cold definitely didn't help. I got lots of uh, lots of shirks, you know, lots of just like don't don't talk to me kind of thing. Um, it was really funny. Um, I, did, I did end up talking to one person, though, and she um, she as soon as I mentioned like, hey, do you like to make money? They they were like, oh, yeah, like I love making money, of course. And then I had to explain you know, okay, like, like companies like Zillow and, and, and city planners and, and governments and whatnot, they really value noise pollution. Like, think about it. Like, when, when you're on Zillow or when you're shopping for a home or shopping for a place to rent, um, in real estate-wise, you uh, the level of noise and how loud it is, it could be a very important factor for you in, in considering that purchase. And she seemed to understand it, but at the point where I said, oh, like, all you have to do is download this app, she she definitely seemed turned off by that. She was like, oh, I have to download something? Oh, my God. So, like, it was definitely really tough. I was like, oh, man, it's like, this sucks. I got one person to talk to about this thing. And, you know, she's already just like, oh, I have to, like, download this app. So, I guess, like, maybe getting to a point where... Or, or maybe explaining it in a more simplistic way and then getting to a point where, like, downloading the app is, like, a you know, one-click method where they just scan a QR code and it's, like, instantly downloading. Like, that could help. But um, but that, that was the, the random occurrence I had on, in Times Square. It was pretty, pretty hilarious. Um, my fiancé got, uh, got a lot of kicks out of it. But uh, in the Natick sense and in the Demo sense, you're, you're so spot on with that stuff, dude. Like, my friends, for instance, my close friends, I just said, hey, listen, I'm going to install this device in your car for you, and I'm going to manage everything in the back end. You just, you know, leave it in your car and drive and go about your normal day and don't even think about it. And, like, open the app, and then you'll see, like, your car status and, like, your car's health, and then you might get some tokens. And they said, oh, dude, that's, that's pretty sick, like. I can sell those tokens. I said, yeah, you can sell them and make some money if you want. And so they're completely open to the idea of just, hey, listen, William's going to take take care of all this stuff. And he's going to just, you know, load this device in there, manage these devices and, you know, do all this, do all that stuff for me. I don't have to think about all the crypto stuff. All I have to do is, you know, take my tokens, send them to Coinbase and then sell them. And my, you know, and my job and their job's done, essentially, if they, if they want to. Um, but that that's kind of like my experience with onboarding people just to kind of keep things as uh, sh- simple and short as possible. I don't want to take up too much time, obviously. Typically like the, the, the accessibility and the user experience is like one of the massive points of like a service doing really well, like how accessible it is and how easy it is for people to actually use. And of course how useful it is. So if people find like making money is useful, but it's like a no brainer for people to go on to Amazon and find anything that they need for a super cheap price and to the point of it literally being delivered to your door and or if you need to return something they'll pick it up at your door so they made it ridiculously easy for people to um, interact with and that's why they in a big way have become so successful is because it meets all of the needs of a person in a very like a very fluid way so whoever can do that with their systems as well too especially in the deep end space uh, they'll be able to be really successful because people do like to make money but people will like fade things completely if it's too difficult. And that's what I've experienced already with the crypto space is most people don't realize how much money you can make in the space, but it's so excruciatingly hard to get into and to navigate 
most people won't even try to understand, right? Luckily, for the people that do try to understand and do take their time and go in, um, we can benefit greatly from, you know, the mass adoption when it does come because we're already here setting our, you know, setting our bets and creating our relationships and, and figuring out the space, right? So there's a, a payoff to being a part of the, you know, the first chapter. But yeah, usually it's it's like, you know, the user experience is one of the, the, the biggest points that, um, you know, companies have to, to figure out to, to create, you know, a mass adoption effect. Yeah, I love that. User experience, and I'll just add to that, user experience plus user enrichment, right? If we can do those together, or if you can do those together as a project or protocol, you've got a powerful network ahead of you, right? User experience is key, and then user enrichment, right? You can be enriched in a number of ways. If you put them together, you've got something that's really hot. Let's, uh, Thank you for putting the hand up, Trillion Cap. We're uh, pretty low key here, so you can uh, jump in. What's going on today? Oh, not much. Thanks for having me up, guys. Um, yeah, no, there's a lot of opportunities in uh, in this sector of crypto, in particular. You know, most Bitcoin miners are using upwards of three thousand or above watts at the wall, um, and and uh, again, the competition's enormous uh, and, and ever increasing in that sector. So this. Uh, it really allows the home miner or, you know, these really smaller players or, or newer people to crypto as well to actually participate at the ground level. And, uh, you know, I, I highly encourage everyone to have a broad exposure. Don't pick one or two. Try and smooth out that risk curve from having a blend of, of, of whether it's test net, you know, in its infancy, all the way to the more mature projects that are already main net in that. Uh, GeoNet has been... A huge winner for us in particular with their GNSS sensors. Uh, there's other ones like Crank, as Joe had alluded to there. XNet is, is another really interesting one. It's done very well. Um, Onikoi, there's Wingbit, uh, which tracks airplanes. And again, it doesn't use very much power consumption. So even in Europe or places where electricity is substantially more than it is here in Canada or the States. Uh, so it allows a, a broad range of participation. And again, when you have say four or five six of these projects in one portfolio of hardware you not only get exposure to the various tokens and chains but also the hardware and just kind of allows uh, a knowledge curve to start you know a non-linear exposure to the all these crypto projects as a whole and again if you combine that with the traditional a6 gpu cpus uh, with sensors and staking, and, and if you have, you know, an try mile wide strategy is what we've done, and it's worked ex exceptionally well for us so far. Um, you know, it really, it really allows you to to really kind of get really granular uh, and, and really kind of start, you know, tuning your portfolio, much like an equity portfolio, right? You you can have exposure to commodities, so you want to divide it into sectors, you know, your max and minimums and and how much exposure you want to this, that, and the risk tolerances, et cetera. There's a lot of optionality in, in the crypto as a whole. You know, there's a lot of different ways to play it. And there's a lot of tribalism, whether it's on the chains, or whether it's proof of work or proof of stake, or, or how it's produced, or the emission schedule, uh, what have you. But again, if you could kind of see past that, uh, much like a traditional equity portfolio manager would, would have to do, right? You want global exposure. You don't want to just have the S&P 500 or the Qs. Um, anyway, one of the things, you know, that, that Pat kind of alluded to but didn't elaborate on, so I'll piggyback off from here. Uh, a lot of these different, uh, the hardware, you can have dual purpose for, depending on what the project is, you could actually earn on two different projects so for example geonet you could actually dual mine or so to speak with onikoi and i believe there's another one rtk some of these uh asic miners even though they're specific uh algorithms there's some chains that share the same algorithms that you could point them to we've seen um different uh different proof of work projects that are still gpu mineable where you actually end up dual mining because of uh, recent forks in the algorithm and however they have those integrated. Uh, stuff like, you know, your, your helium gateways, well, Crank decided to support all helium gateways and come out with custom firmware that allows you to dual mine both and you can throw on their uh, Things IX and other LoRaWAN IoT-based projects, as well as set up, you know, because it's a Raspberry Pi, you can set up different, um, different, 
other D-pin projects, if you uh, have the compute power available, which in most cases you will, for example, Mysterium, or uh, I've seen people do get grass through a dockerized container, um, and, and some of the other ones. So you, when, when you have that kind of diversification, it also opens up options to other projects, uh, you know, other... Um, I'm, I'm kind of having a brain dump here, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. But it, it gives you options, and the they will be available if you're on the lookout for them. So n no reason to just look at a project, say, okay, I'm mining it. I'm out of the Discord. I'm done looking at the Twitter comments. If you keep your eyes open, you, you see these unfold. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Uh, really good point there. Uh, you know, keeping your eyes on the prize is the way. Let's, uh, what's going on, Player Taco? GM, GM, everyone. How's everyone doing? Good to, good to see you, man. How, anything new? Uh, shoot. Uh, just creating an event right now in Paris, uh, for next week. Uh, some awesome stuff in the RWA and decentralized AI stuff going on, and just having a blast getting ready for Dubai and feeling FOMO. I'm not in New York right now. And, uh, yeah, it's good to see everyone. Honestly, this weather trip. is like not, it's not, it's not happening, man. It's not it with this weather right now. So you're not missing much in terms of, in terms of that. Uh, you know, weather is weather. Blockchain keeps going. Taco, can, can you do that last part for us one more time? So we're, we're clear on that. Weather is weather. Weather is weather. Blockchain keeps going. I I'm going to use that tag. I'm using <laughs> that now. Yeah, there you go. Uh, that's that's perfect. Oh, I appreciate you being here. Atlas is in the house. Uh, let's add Atlas. Uh, if anybody else is here, we're we're going strong here, uh, rolling right into the second hour. So make sure while you're here right now to uh, to not just like the space. You could repost it if you'd like for others to come in. But we're coming up on an AMA. We're going to talk with uh, Koi uh, in the next hour here. So this has been a little bit more uh, relaxed type of uh, D-Pin number nine conversation today. Uh, obviously, some of the crew is in New York. Uh, you know, either weather is weather. You can decide whether you like that or not. Uh, but uh, and the NFC NYC is going on. Uh, so if you're there, have a good time. Uh, make those connections and uh, and share the lore of D-Pin. Atlas. What's happening today? Yo, I just heard about Paris blockchain. I like what you guys are saying about uh, everything. I'm getting ready for my next quarter purchases, my GeoNet, the XNet, all the good D-Pen stuff out there. But Taco, I'll be in Paris. Yo, are you are you hosting that RWA event that's uh, on the side events for the page, or are you hosting your own little event? I am hosting my own little event uh, with, um, oh my gosh, uh, Sweep, Rays, CPU Coin, Morpheus, uh, Lifted Initiative, Manifest, and Chainlink. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a just a, a crypto cigars and caffeine uh, event, and uh, just a, a little networking event on on a Wednesday night. You know, so I have a I have a big um, event Tuesday with Bird Eye, and uh, this is gonna be one of those things where you just get to sort of sit back and relax before like the next big thing. I get to Paris Monday. When do you get in? Uh, I'm going. I'm getting there Sunday. And I'm staying there for a week, so I'll be from Sunday to Sunday. Nice. Uh, I get in. I get on. I'm in the UK right now, so I get in there on the train Monday ish, and then I leave Thursday night uh, to head back to the UK, then to fly out to Dubai the next day or day after. Amazing. Right on. I'll hit you in the DMs and uh, see see if you want to send the invite. You guys for that. <laughs> if, if you're going to be in Dubai, tap into that or the Paris blockchain. That's that's pretty cool. I will not be in any of those places, but I will be thinking about Dude, it. I'm so jealous. The cigars yeah. and caffeine. Come on, Michael. Like, yeah. that, doesn't that sound well, sick? I'm not going to lie. Uh, if anybody knows me for a while, which most probably don't at this point, but I, I started on this app uh, as the biggest chain link Marine there was. So when you said, when you said chain link and he also mentioned cigars, it was tugging at my heart. Uh, I was starting to look at the, the flights that I could maybe get all the way there. Um, but in all seriousness, that sounds amazing. Uh, and, and it's your own event. So that's pretty cool. I, I wish it, uh, you know, major success. And obviously Paris is a dope spot. Uh, I love Paris. So, 
Uh, really appreciate you stopping in. Uh, one last thing, Taco, before uh, we keep it moving here for the last, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes before we go into uh, the conversation with Koi. Anything in the deep in space? I know you talked about, you know, some real world stuff, uh, but have you been... Have you been tapped into any deep in specifically and have been finding any success or, in, in, you know, want to share anything specifically that you've noticed? Um, I love, deep in, like, I, I got into deep in maybe about two and a half years ago with Demo, um, you know, back when they first started up. And then last year, they were meeting them at the at um, in person at, oh, my gosh, Mainnet. Uh, they ended up, uh, giving me an auto pie and I got that installed in my car. So basically whenever I'm stateside, I, I travel to all the blockchain events by driving. So I've been doing that. Um, you know, some of the easier stuff is like coin XYZ, um, IOTA and their pebble was really cool. I was doing some cool stuff where I was making an on chain transact, like just notification blast every time I ate food. And then I was comparing that to uh, in a Dune dashboard uh, with Bitcoin prices. Um, that, that's just the Internet of Things, you know, uh, where there's a lot of cool stuff within DPIN. I was a, like an early helium miner. Seeing how they've moved over into uh, Solana has been really cool. Um, IO.net looks really interesting with this distributed compute power stuff. Um, and that's why I've been working with uh, CPU coin. Um, for like the last, oof, I've known Sean for maybe two years is when I first met him, but he's been building for like five and a half years. And he's got 185,000 node operators providing edge compute power. And so there's some really cool things going, um, you know, where we, you know, we have the mobile side of things. We have, you know, decentralized AI piece that's being a big part of DPIN on this excess compute power because everyone wants to build um, and, and they talk about, you know, uh, GPUs being the most sought after resource right now. So, um, you know, there's, there's grass, there's Morpheus, uh, you know, Morpheus is doing some really cool stuff. Um, and then, you know, manifest, is, you know, is the whole decentralized AI side of things for the deep in community. So doing a lot of cool stuff, uh, in AI with deep in as well. Um, just you know we just had our first cohort meeting today uh started a an ai cohort with uh crypto oracle collective so uh, man there's just amazing stuff going on all the way around and people aren't really recognizing yet what it's going to be but i remember an ico i was part of you know 2016 that did like promise that everything of every device talking to every device tokenizing that conversation and you know we, we know what happened there, but now that speak is, that talk is real. Um, and the ownership of data is amazing. So what's really, what I'm really excited for, one of the things that's slowly coming up is uh, healthcare and ownership of your own information. Because that's sort of what DPIN is at the basis, ownership of data, you know, and tokenizing that data. And so we all think of it as dollars and cents tokenization um, or PFP tokenization, but that PFP could also be a private ZK PFP that on the backside that only you, your doctor, and your insurance company could see is your healthcare data. And so there's some really cool things building out in that. Really excited. Um, a really interesting, really weird thing that I saw and learned and, you know, a couple months ago back at ETH Denver, um, but Arweave launched out AOS. It's sort of like their Arweave on-chain operating system. Um, it, it's sort of like a competition to uh, what Nier's been building, BOS, BOS, Blockchain uh, Operating System. And so seeing like a, a basic command line program, you know, or Python or SQL being written and running programs on-chain, um, I think is going to be some really cool stuff. So seeing how that gets integrated into like IOTA's uh, Pebble or other cool things, I think there's some really cool stuff there. Uh, there's just so many awesome things. I could talk all day. I, I could tell the, the passion in the voice, though. I love to hear it. I think it's uh, super helpful. Now, if you're here for the first time or a few times, and you're like, you're lost, you're starting to make do, you're kind of understanding it. All I could say 
is make sure you're following not just Taco, but anybody else here. And also, most importantly, you're coming back week in and week out because you may not get it the first week. You may not get it the second week. But each week that you're here and each week you're learning more, you're getting closer as you're earning more to also understanding better and better. It takes some time, but once it clicks, then you're, you're, you start really diving in and it makes a ton of sense. And, and, and I'm sure a lot of people experience this. For me, I didn't understand it the first time I, I read about it. I listened about it. It takes some time. So don't be, you know, thrown off because uh, as Taco said, there's a lot coming. You know, he talked about Demo years ago uh, and, and Demo is still, you know, you can get involved in today. Uh, and there's a ton like that, whether they're brand new, uh, a little bit older, uh, or still coming. Yeah, Taco, jump back in. I, I, the one thing is a lot of people sometimes, th- like with like Helium and stuff, like thought pe- people think they have to buy like devices and stuff like that to do this. Demo, uh, if you have a smart card, you don't need the AutoPi to plug in. Um, and you can use smart card integration. They even integrate directly with your Tesla as well. So you could literally be like, buy a tesla and earn token you know taco it's a really good point and i should have mentioned it one i have a tesla i have demo integrated i haven't had to do anything but take two minutes to connect it you know to the tesla app which does this you know a similar thing but forget the car part how about we just go to the internet right and we talk about grass if no one's understanding that's an extension you just need to go to the chrome extension download it and next thing you know you're on your way to earning a future reward uh, of some sort we don't know there is no token yet Uh, it it does appear to be on its way you can see it in a secondary market and stuff but the point is make a good one taco you do not have to purchase anything to get involved you can literally get involved just by using your 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 fingers your computer and a few minutes of your time and and like hive mapper even has you can go and connect your solana wallet and you can go like confirm sign designations like they're like are all of these signs pointing to the left and it'll give you like 40 signs and you just say yes or no if one is pointing to the right you know you say no and they're a, they're basically doing half human tests, making sure you're real, but then also just you know confirming everything. And so, yeah, it, this like just a little bit of time. It's amazing. I love it, man. This reminds me so much of the uh, early internet, like back when companies were starving for actual consumer reviews, like on the ground, nuanced consumer reviews, and they were paying out the nose for these early internet. And of course, we all know what happened. That got really saturated. And now you can make like 20 cents off of them. Guess where we are in the timeline with deep ends, guys. So super bullish. I got to bounce. Just wanted to drop up here and say, hey, give a subscribe and follow the Wolf Web 3. And also Scott, uh, Will, Rippy here. You see him there. Poppy, everybody here on stage. These guys are brilliant. I got to go let my brain relax from all the, the pouring in and knowledge that I got. Just appreciate it. Love y'all. Thanks, Ray. And make sure to tap into the RWA space. So Ray is always crushing it there. Uh, that brain is getting a rest so he can prepare to give more knowledge to everyone there uh, tomorrow uh, and always when he joins. So I appreciate you, Ray. Have a good one. Uh, Will, I know you had your hand up. You don't need to keep the hand up. Just come in and talk to us. No, of course. I was trying to be a little cordial there, I guess. But um, Ray, man, a freaking pleasure hearing from you, man. Get get going. Get Get that brain working for uh, for the RWA space tomorrow, right? We need you. We need you in uh, top top mint condition for that, dude. We need you. We need you spitting facts. But um, yeah, guys, I, uh, I I just wanted to add to uh, to that point, Michael, where you said the future rewards. You know, like future rewards when it comes to grass and whatnot. And that that kind of made me think about how a lot of these protocols that we're using they don't necessarily have they don't necessarily have a um like a public token released yet. They, they haven't gone through a TGE yet. And so I feel like. I feel like when they when we finally get these TGEs out, when we finally get a lot of these tokens out in the public, where you're able to you know trade and transact and, and sell them for for fiat, um, we'll, we'll, I feel like I feel like we're going to see like a crazy massive like adoption rate at that moment, where it's it's going to kind of turn into like a stable uptick, where if these tokenomics are if they're if they are i guess i'm trying to find the right word if, if it's sustainable if these tokenomics work for these projects and the the data is coming in thus giving value to the token we'll see a lot more we'll see a lot more not just money flood in but we'll see a lot more users flood in and at that point 
I feel like adoption is just, it's just like a no brainer. Like these like mass adoption is just going to like gradually increase at that point, obviously past the, the, uh, the, the hype that's being generated right now for, you know, speculation based on where these tokens are going to be priced at. But, um, I just feel like after we get out of the woods there, like in, instead of seeing future rewards, we have like just current rewards where I can actually slap a number on Silencio and say, oh yeah, like you'll earn an average of X amount of dollars, you know, per, per day or per month or something for your Silencio tokens. Uh, I feel like people are really going to start getting the light bulbs clicking in their brains and saying, oh wow, like I'm going to start using this thing right now. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, Atlas, I'm going to throw it to you for a quick uh, comment here, and then we're going to close us up here. We're not closing the space, but the conversation for today in Deepin's our number nine episode, Top Companies and Projects, uh, has been fun, uh, but we're going to roll into an awesome conversation with Koi. Atlas, talk to us. Yes, sir. Just quick comments. Uh, so I just started farming grass. I love it. It's easy. Doesn't take away the speed from my miners. That was kind of why I was hesitant at first. Uh, but all my miners are running fine. I I did want to say, Joe, I do watch your YouTube videos. They're pretty sweet. Um, as I'm pondering YouTube, trying to find good information, yours have definitely been out there in, in my view of this. And then uh, I am in the top 10%. Yeah, of course, man. It's good content. Uh, and I am in the top 10% for Nadix and Silencio. So let's go, guys. I'm trying to beat you on, on that record, by the way. Just saying, Atlas. I'm, I'm, I'm catching up. I'm catching up, bro. That was a, that was a, a really well done uh, drop right there, Atlas. I mean, your top ten on Silencio, top ten, uh, you know, showcase right here. A little humble brag. I love it. I think everybody should do it when you come up. In fact, maybe the next time when you anybody comes up and puts their hand up, the first thing you got to tell us is your ranking. I'm top, you know, twenty five in Silencio. Uh, I'm top one thousand. If me, I'm uh, I'm top one hundred thousand on Demo. Uh, there's 77,000 connected cars. Um, no, all right. Good times, guys. If you have not followed everyone yet, I don't know what you're doing. You're not doing it right. Make sure you are following so you don't miss next week's space. It is the same time, Wednesday, Wolf Web 3. Those notifications better be on, not just because we crush it every week for deep ends, but you have so many other opportunities across the space to learn and earn in different industries and abilities. Amazing speakers, amazing hosts continued throughout the web, the Wolf Web3 uh, you know, platform, and the speakers make it uh, so fantastic. So shout out to everyone. Scott, I know you're still uh, you know, rolling around in NYC. I hope that you're with us. Uh, we're going to roll into the next conversation here. But Scott, how is the NYC vibe? Yo, be honest. I'm gonna be honest. You know, it's not eat Denver. You know what I mean? It's it, it, it's not deep in Denver. Um, there's not really any RWA stuff out here either. Bro. So yeah, I ain't gonna sit up here in Cap and be like, yes, yeah, deep in. I mean, there's not even one deep in event, which is wild. We went from seven in Denver to zero, and yeah, like I guess it's kind of my fault too because I could have like maybe threw in an RWA mixer or something for everybody. But it's just, but by the time like the idea got out, the the time was was closed out. But uh, it's uh it's really cool to see some of the 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 other projects like uh, Valeria Games and some of the other ones that have been building for a long time uh, get a lot of shine at at their booth. So um, yeah, that that I guess that would be the silver lining. Um, and the other thing too is um, I approached NFT NYC, you know, about about like you know. You know, imagine if it was NFT NYC, but it was DeFi, um, you know, RWAs, just, you know, all, all the big interoperability, like Chainlink, you know, just throw all the oracles in there with Pith. I think, you know, it could grow. But if we're just going to sit here and be stuck on art NFTs, um, yeah, that I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm 100. Maybe I'm wrong. But I just 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 what I'm seeing. Um, I just don't see how like it could stand alone. If that makes any Scott, sense, it's our job, man. That's why you and I are here. We're both at NFT NYC, man. We got to start converting these guys. We got we got to be like you know little sleeper agents going in and saying, yeah, man, we're here for the art and the PFPs, bro. And then we just slap the Silencio app onto their phone, and they're like, what's that? And it's like, this is your new life now, bro. I'm just imagining you two as like the men in black. You show up with the wands. Everyone you come across, you wand them. They think that they start out as an NFT fan. They come out as an RWA player. Like, and that's just like the clips, just immediate. Like, 
that that's just my imagination. I think that's what the rain has got going on here in New York. But anyways, I understand NFT NYC. They've got a brand. They're trying to stick to it. But it does make sense if it was more than just those uh, letters NF and T because RWA makes a lot of sense. I just the idea of RWA NYC sounds good, brings a lot of industry in. Uh, and then, of course, obviously, D-Pins uh, would add uh, a ton uh, because, it, you know, it's kind of repetitive at this point, I think, when there's nothing new. It's just the same old game. But it's always good to get those kind of, you know, views from the ground. Um, there still is time left, so I'm sure we'll get a full recap next Wednesday for D-Pins. Uh, I think that's that's our space today uh, as far as our episode and talking companies and projects overall. Uh, we'll wait. I know Koi is going to come in. We're going to keep it rolling. We'll wef- wait for Charlie. But, yeah, Will, talk to us. No, I was just going to add before the end of this segment, um, if anyone's up in New York, man, like let's let's all link up, you know, especially if you're going to Bing Bong. If anyone here is going to Bing Bong, I know that Scott's going to be there. I'm going to be there. Uh, hopefully we'll have like a little deep in section there. Um, <laughs> there's a little deep in little table in the back right there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, heck yeah, dude, all, all, all of us, all of us are here. We're just, we're, we're vibing. So please, you know, seek us out, hit us up in the DMs. Um, that being said, Scott and Michael, dude, we, we got to link up for like a lunch or something, dude. What, what are we doing? Yeah, well, I mean, listen, I'm just going to say it like this. I got into New York early this morning, took a red eye across country. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm hosting an event tomorrow night uh, for Sporting Crypto. I'd love to see you guys. Uh, but I've been seeing everywhere this bing bong stuff. And I know Scott is behind it all because Scott's got his hands in a lot of places. But I, I've seen it. He's bringing the people to the event, I keep saying the bing bong, like that is what, in my opinion, as an outsider at this point, just looking and seeing what's going down, it feels like that's the place to be at NFT NYC. Am I right, Scott? Yeah, Mike, I'm glad you brought this up. And I've been yelling about this for three years. I used to yell at the doodles. I used to yell at Bored Apes, uh, you know, all the projects in the bull run with all the money. Um, like last year, a club, uh, a project rented uh, the 4040 club out, you know, this is like a, a legacy club and it had nothing like inside, like you rent this club out, but then there was nothing inside. But uh, yeah, Bing Bong tonight, uh, we're bringing Bobby Smurda out. So yeah, man, uh, definitely cool that he posted to his five point, I think he has like 5.4 million followers and he tagged NFT party, he tagged Bing Bong and it was cool to see people in the comments. Like we talk about d right? Like people had no idea what the hell Web3 is, NFTs, and they're gonna still pull up tonight. Uh, to Bing Bong, so yeah, man, super hyped to 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 see everybody tonight, and yeah, anyone knows Bobby? Bobby is, is a fun guy. He's really excited. It's not like when the board apes paid ASAP Ferg, he just came, got his bag, and left. Like Bobby's gonna be hanging out for like an hour and a half tonight, and then performing two songs. So yeah, excited. There it is, man. That's the place to be. I mean, uh, I'm just I've I've seen it across the timeline. Scott brought Bobby, and that's the place tonight. Bing Bong. Uh, Taco, we're going to go to you and then we're going to go and we're going to start our conversation. Let's keep it short here. What's going on there? Uh, I was going to say, uh, for those that are in New York and not knowing what to do tonight, uh, Monkey Dow is hosting an event. And if you go and, uh, bug the heck out of Drip House, uh, on Twitter and let them know that Taco sent you, there may or may not be tickets available for the Monkey Dow event tonight. That's, uh, that's about it. Uh, oh, and there is a cigar event in New York um, going on, I don't know, when, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, I think, I think on the 5th. Love it. Cigar events everywhere across the world, especially here in New York. Taco is your man when it comes to that. And uh, appreciate all of your, uh, uh, you know, ads in the last hour. And that's for everybody listening, sharing, because this is uh, what we're rolling into right now. Uh, we have. Koi is in the house, and Al from the Koi Foundation, in fact, the founder, is here. So uh, let's just start by saying, how are you, Al? Thanks for joining us. Hey, man. Doing well. Uh, Launching a lot of new products this week. Should be exciting. Well, then this is a great opportunity to talk about some of those products you're launching. We'll get into kind of all about Koi. We want everyone that's here with us right now and anybody that listens in the future to understand everything going on. So why don't we kind of, before we talk about what you're launching, uh, you know, the number of products, maybe we can push it back to the start and you can give us maybe a high level overview of kind of deep in and, and essentially what Koi Foundation is doing to pioneer in the space. 
Yeah, so Corey goes back to uh, about 2016. I started a think tank in Chicago where we were reviewing all these new uh, altcoins that were jumping out. Um, there's a whole bunch of them that had uh, things like file storage, things like streaming, um, all sorts of types of social apps that all had their own token and they all had a node. Um, and that's kind of the core of every decentralized network. So you need a node that's going to store and transmit information um, and you need a token to incentivize that operation. So we started looking at that back then and started seeing a lot of uh, very similar things that all these projects were doing. The one thing it turns out is that when you have a token, you have to stake the token, right? That's how you collateralize all the operations. And then you need a note that runs on people's computers that you can stake that on. Um, so we built the coin out and the coin out is now available. Uh, it's gotten 50,000 downloads in the last like three months. Um, so we got like a ton of people actually mining Koi tokens. And then in the next few weeks, we're launching all coins on Koi. And we've got a whole host of people from search engines to uh, storage networks and social media and all kinds of amazing stuff like that. Um, and you can mine them all on your home computer, which is pretty amazing. So just about anybody can get into crypto with no upfront cost. Um, there's a whole smorgasbord of different apps that you can get involved in, and each one's in its own community, with its own kind of uh, motivations and stuff. Um, one of them, the search engine, just got 5,000 notes in a couple months, which is pretty amazing. Hey, Al, uh, what's up, my brother? Good to have you here, man. Um, can you explain like a little bit more like so when when somebody opens up the koi uh the program uh you you know you see the different tasks um do you want to tell everybody like like what are those tasks doing like for some of the other companies i kind of explain that more so like they know what they're you know what the nodes are actually doing um if you wanted to touch on that a little bit Al. hey Scott. good to see you, as always um yeah all the tasks are open source so um when you're in the node you can actually click on them and you can see the full source code on github and they all have their own little description. There's uh, about a dozen of them on there right now, so I won't go into all of them. But uh, a couple examples are like crawling the internet to get uh, inflation data, uh, which is trueflation.com. Uh, they're launching a token in the next couple of months. It's a pretty exciting one. Um, and that allows us to like you know track if prices on something are changing over time, which you can't really do without trusting your government right now. So it's a, it's a very powerful application. Um, the search engine apps are doing a little bit more heavy compute on your device. So they're actually going crawling the internet as well. And then they train AI models on, on your home computer. Um, some of these social apps are also running databases and things like that in the background. It's all, it all runs inside of a little sandbox on your computer though. So it's never actually, uh, accessing any of your personal stuff. It's just, it's basically taking a little piece of what's on your computer, uh, taking a little separate space for all this stuff to run inside of. And then, uh, you're offering up your, uh, storage space and compute space on your device. So when you're not using it, then it's doing something useful. Hey, that's awesome, Al. And I wanted to explain like how, because Koi is one of my, my main examples. You know, we always say Silencio, Nadix, and, and a few others. But anyone listening, like, and, and you want to get into, you know, something else than, you know, using a device or maybe something uh, like mapping or, or something that you started with, Koi is a great start. Literally, you download the, the app to your computer and you literally run these tasks. And it's just like, you know, get grass where it's like out of, you know, it's out, you're not even thinking about it. You know, you, you're, you're just running and you're, and you're farming. So I think like anyone who's trying to get into deep in and, you know, maybe like what Michael said earlier, you, you know, you don't know where to start. This is another great one, you know, that you can start today. You don't need to go order a $500 device, literally download the app it takes two seconds and it's on your computer and start running tasks. So yeah, it's just a great, great entry uh, to deep in, in my opinion. And yeah, I'll continue to keep using Koi for an example. Hey, thanks Scott. Um, and yeah, I know, uh, Taco too. Uh, good to see you again, man. Or I mean, good to hear you on the space at least. Always good to see you, man. I, I know one of the things that you, you might not have touched on, but you've touched on previously is like the introduction to Koi, just even like connecting socials and stuff, you get some Koi tokens to sort of, sort of start you out. Uh, can you talk about some of the tasks that people are currently running or even like the test tasks so people know what they're doing and what Koi is doing in the background? Um, yeah, I commented on that a little bit just a second ago, but the, the main thing is you're giving us a little piece of your computer that you're not that you're not already using. Um, and soon it'll be working on mobile as well. Um, but in the background, then you're doing some kind of processing, um, generally uh, very fancy math. So it could be, uh, you know, download a bunch of websites and then index those websites, provide like a searchable database for somebody. Um, it's all about trying to manage information better. We kind of, we, we've had this idea for a while that information is kind of the new currency of the world. And so 
as an individual, you really don't have a lot of control over the information that you put on the internet. Like this space right now is obviously going up to access servers, but then we don't really know where it goes from there. Um, so there was this big hack recently where uh, something like, I think a hundred million dollars was paid between Netflix and Facebook, where Facebook sold all of our personal DMs. Um, and so if you've ever sent a DM on Facebook, it was sold to Netflix, which is kind of incredible. And then Netflix is now using that to train AI to recommend uh, videos to you. Um, but in the process, there's all these engineers that can now read all your messages because they have them for debugging, which is kind of nuts. So we've always wanted this idea of like a, a digital second skin. Um, that's really what we're working towards with Koi is we want you to be able to use these Koi nodes as the back end for a social network or a messaging protocol or a VPN, whatever it is that kind of keeps you a little bit more secure online. Um, some pretty exciting applications coming out in that area too. Awesome. No, I, I love what you're building out. Uh, you know, I, I early coin user, like sub 2000s and, you know, you keep building every day. So it's good to see what, what coy has been building out and, and the perseverance of, you know, the grind is real. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I've got a, just a follow on question here, Al, just uh, curiously, you know, you talked about mobile and it coming to mobile soon. Can you give us a little bit more of an idea when you say soon, does that mean, you know, is that like a month, a year? I, I always hear these terms, and so I think it'd be kind of helpful to get a better idea. When you say like, do you think it, you know, what, what's our time frame when we think about it, it could be on mobile? Uh, so there's two parts to that. Uh, the first one is we're actually building a custom Android operating system. Uh, so that's a little bit further out, probably like three to six months. Um, we anticipate that being the real like platform version of Koi. Um, and so when you get to that point, then what that means is you have the Android operating system custom designed to run these background jobs, which means you can buy a phone and the phone could pay itself off. Um, obviously that's a big lift. And right now we're pretty focused on getting the token launch out. We just launched an L1 blockchain. Uh, we just worked with Solana that's been live for like a year. Um, so a lot of really deep technical stuff going on over the, on the, the engineering department here. Um, the, the more recent stuff, which is even more exciting though, is we've been working with a bunch of existing apps like Uprock, uh, if you're familiar, and they already have these uh, apps that allow you to do different tasks on your device. And we're working with them to do even more background workloads for the Koi network. So you'll be able to earn Koi tokens on a few of these devices and then other tokens that come out on Koi, you'll be able to earn in a few different places. Um, the other case that's pretty exciting too is there's a few of these social apps coming out. So I think Modi is now working on a, uh, a mobile app. And so that's gonna have some background run times that do things like uh, kind of co-host content. So you'll be using their mobile app for social and your content will be hosted on someone else's phone and their content will be hosted on your phone, but it'll all be encrypted. So it's like when you open your phone to read your newsfeed, it's getting streamed to you from a bunch of other devices, which is pretty cool. One of the things I know, Al, that you guys used to, I haven't checked my node in a while, I just run tasks, but you originally had like people, like what was really cool is teaching people how to like create Web3 auth tokens and like decentralized storage pieces. Are you looking at um, making that, uh, you know, running concurrent with them adding their socials so they don't have to go to a separate site to do that and that it's all sort of built intuitively in inside the coin node? Yeah, so the, the whole idea here is that you should really only need to go to one place. And like once you're on your device, you kind of want this to act like a wallet. Um, so your personal kind of profile that you build on a coin node actually stays on your device and none of those secrets ever get leaked. But once you add new secrets to it, like if you make an account on some secondary service that you need for a certain coin task, that stays on your account as well. Um, and so you can start to build up this like personal profile and um, sort of harvest harness all of the ways that you can create value for people in this one space. Um, and the coin is kind of your hub for all of that. Awesome. Yeah, really solid. The other thing I wanted to note just while we're in here, because if you're listening, maybe you're not looking or you're not familiar. I've pinned to the top uh, one of the, uh, the pinned tweet from the Koi Foundation. Uh, and I've also put it into the chat box so that you can learn a little bit more. You've heard uh, already some of the some of the details, but this way you can actually connect uh, and, and get going right away. I mean, congratulations, one on the 50,000 users. Uh, you know, Al, when we think about it, there's more than 50,000 nodes running now. What was the time frame to get there? So we had about a thousand nodes online uh, in the fall, um, like up to, I think Christmas we were like 1500. So since Christmas, we've gotten something like uh, 49,000 nodes. 
Um, a lot of them, though, in the last month, actually. Uh, we took this pretty slow because we, uh, we're a very tech-forward team, so we like to build things, test them out as kind of slowly as we can, make sure that things are going to scale well. Um, and then we've uh, since rapidly scaled up. So I think we hit the 25,000 node mark uh, middle of February or a little bit late February. Um, and things have just been rocking from there. Wow. So that's pretty explosive then uh, over the recent time frame, huh? Yeah, it's been something else. Um, we uh, we have a small sign in the office, like a, we have a screen in the office now that displays the node count. I think it goes up by like about 15 every 15, 20 minutes. It's kind of yeah, incredible. That- that was actually going to be my follow-up right there because, I mean, look, you posted this uh, just a little less than a week ago that you smashed through 50,000 users. And just to try to get a little bit more clarity on how quickly that, that's growing, uh, where are you guys at, like, right now? Uh, I think 52,000, roughly. Okay, wow, yeah. So, I mean, that that's awesome. So, it's, it's clear that the, the time early on has, uh, you know, putting in the foundation and stuff has really paid off in, in the way that you're growing, uh, you know, quickly at this point. And so, uh, for anyone listening right now, uh, that, uh, you know, post uh, up in the in the Jumbotron, the Nest, whatever you want to call it, you can learn more about Koi uh, and also get involved, uh, you know, within five minutes, really. Uh, and so, you heard there's a lot coming down the pipeline. We're still going to continue to learn more, but the growth is obviously there and continuing. So, uh, I wanted to just share some kind of background as you're kind of giving us a little bit more information. You know, Al, I, I, what's the team like? Maybe talk about a little bit of the team at Koi, right? Because you're a founder, you've got, uh, you know, how many people on the team? What does the team look like? Are you global, local? Uh, what's the kind of setup? Yes, yeah, so we're uh, in, I think, 13 countries around the world now. Um, about half of the people working on this are volunteers. It's about like 25 people. Um, there's like another 25 that are inside of the Koi team. Um, most of them are pretty much just incredible hackers. Uh, we had a consulting firm prior to starting Koi, and so a bunch of us worked together on that, and we did some consulting for notable Web3 projects, uh, helped launch a bunch of smart contracts and things like that. And then uh, when the 2020 kind of cycle happened, COVID had sort of resulted in the market slowing down a bit for consulting work. And we just put our heads down and started building. Um, and we got the first version of this out at the beginning of 2020 and started des- like kind of designing and developing the tasks framework, which is how all these different apps can coexist. Um, we built out a lot of stuff in the RV ecosystem uh, kind of around that. And then we've since... Uh, now kind of built it out into a new kind of L1. Um, but yeah, the team has sort of evolved around that. So we've managed to pick up all these amazing Web3 developers from around the world. Um, and now it's starting to get gradually more into the, the business side of it. This is actually, as you can imagine, we aren't doing that much marketing. So this is sort of the first push on the marketing side that we've really done uh, since the early days, which is pretty exciting. And, you know, if you're just starting with this push right now, what is the, what is kind of, further down the line type of marketing push how do you market when you think about marketing what is your focus on you know if you're going to start expanding into marketing what does that look like for you guys so what we've been trying to do lately is uh, actually downsize the koi team because you know we don't need to have like a bloated organization at the center of an ecosystem like this it's really more about making it as truly decentralized as we can um and so what that looks like is more the core team gradually spinning off to start their own company. So a handful of our people, like uh, Symes, one of our top guys on the operations side right now, has just launched DataSwap, which is like a, uh, a data marketplace for AI, which is a really exciting project and runs on Koi. Um, and then we've got a bunch of other projects that are now spinning out of kind of the core team and the core ecosystem. Um, and that's sort of how we're seeing this grow. It's like we'd rather build 50 companies with small teams that are really dedicated to a single idea than to build one big monolithic company. So it's just Web2 all over again, you know. Got it. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I understand that exactly kind of there uh, when you think about it. And so I was going to you know, ask you kind of partnerships, collaborations, uh, anything that's been instrumental. I know you're talking about now kind of the future. We're looking forward to it. But up to this point, have you, uh, you know, anything significant there uh, or instrumental in, in Koi's success to this point? Yeah, I mean, we've been starting to work a lot more closely with the Solana ecosystem because uh, we have a fork of Solana, so a lot of that stuff is compatible, and we're starting to learn a lot from sort of the, the core tech there. Uh, a lot of the big node operator groups and the Solana Foundation themselves have all been really helpful. Um, outside of that, uh, in the next couple of months, we have big hackathons coming out. Uh, Ocean Protocol is going to be a really big one because they have like a huge data marketplace, so Koi is a really good way to gather that kind of data, um, and we see that being... Uh, 
really easy low hanging fruit for hackers. You know, you can set up something on Koi in a matter of minutes that allows you to then kind of create an entire new ecosystem on the ocean side. Um, another couple of them are going to be uh, things like what we're doing with Mantle Network, which is um, another L1 kind of EVM based L1. And so a lot of these uh, L1s need storage, they need compute, um, and a lot of the time they would have to sell their token right now. So they would have to then go buy uh, some storage token to pay for that kind of thing. Um, something like Filecoin, but instead with this, they'll be able to actually use their own token on Koi as an incentive and get lots of node operators earning their token and mining it. So it becomes like a, a secondary revenue stream for them, which is pretty cool. Um, so I think Mantle, and then I think uh, somebody was talking to someone from Ripple recently as well. I'm not sure if that one's going to actually launch in the near future, but we'll see how it goes. Got it. There's some, some interesting, uh, you know, some interesting details that you're sharing with us around, uh, you know, potential partnerships if you paid attention and, and some of these uh, already uh, completed collaborations and who you're working with and, uh, uh, you know, fairly interesting as I learned more just listening. Um, community, we talked about marketing. Uh, we talked about a little bit of the partnerships. What about community uh, in sort of the engagement factor? How, how do you, you know, from your perspective and, and how does Koi sort of engage in, in uh, moving forward, growing the community around kind of deep in and obviously AI? And, and I guess, uh, you know, what, what do you say about community being, you know, the level of importance it is for, for, for Koi? Well, it's like community is obviously the thing that ties Web3 together, right? Um, I've seen a lot of these projects launch over the years, and the thing that differentiates really strong decentralized projects is can they find good unit costs? And that usually starts with the community. If you just have a bunch of, like, uh, say, commercial node operators that are running large batches of nodes individually, those tend to be um, really inefficient, and they actually kind of drain on your community because they're uh, basically reaping all of the inflation rewards of the new token or protocol and then they're selling it to pay for some hosting costs on a server somewhere. Um, so one of the things that we've really tried to do is build this really strong core group of node operators. Um, and they're super active on the Discord. There's like 40,000 people that are daily active on the Discord that are always in there talking about it. Huge amount of GMs. It's kind of crazy every morning. Like, they just scroll for like a minute or two to get through all the GMs. Um, those, those kinds of people are really key for this because what we're looking for is like, we want a whole bunch of people who have the coin node to be able to run your new protocol. And so if you come to us with an idea like, hey, I want to launch a search engine, we want to find you a couple thousand nodes right away. Um, that was the really exciting case with this was when ADOT launched their search engine on Koi. I think they got 5,000 nodes like almost overnight. Um, and that's, that's what we want to see because that means that like a single or even like a solo hacker can come to us. Uh, they can read the docs, write a task, deploy it to the network without even talking to anybody, and then just make a couple posts on Discord and get some attention. And then a bunch of people volunteer computers for them. Um, and that's, I think that's the really powerful side of this is that you go from having just an idea to having a task. And then once you've got a task, then you can build your community around handing out a new token to people. Um, and if that's a storage token or a compute token, or especially even like a social app like Moti, um, all of those allow you to grow really, really fast and get a whole bunch of people in. And then your resources that you need to actually provide a service scale with the group of people who are using that service. So if you launch a social network on Koi, if each person brings their own computer, then you never have to actually run ads to cover the hosting costs because you have enough computers from day one. Um, and then if you do run ads, then at least everybody who runs the computers for it is going to get paid out of the ads, right? So there's some really exciting economics that are unlocked. Exciting economics are, are that's a term that, you know, together I really like. Um, you know, when you fit them together, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Scott, you still with us? Yes, yes, yes. The internet is choppy, but uh, I I'm still here. Bro. Good. Just wanted to make sure, you know, I know that, uh, you know, there's rain. New York is crazy right now. So I just want to make sure uh, that, you know, uh, we've got the crew here. Uh, and, and William, you're here, I, I, you know, as well. So if you guys at any point, feel free. Uh, obviously, we're not together right now, but you guys can chop in uh, with any questions you want. I'll keep us rolling, though. You know, Koi uh, or... I'm thinking Koi. I'm saying Koi. But Al, um, when you think about the regulatory landscape for what you're doing, achieving, uh, how do you kind of navigate uh, the, the landscape? And, and then think of me, thinking kind of like what kind of challenges uh, could you face? Have you faced? Uh, are you prepared to face? Um, regulatory wise, this is actually kind of the golden ticket. Um, one of the cool things I mentioned, the exciting economics, right? 
when you launch a task on Koi, you're launching a new token to a group of people who are running nodes to support that token. Um, and that is the gold standard definition of a utility token and actually like one of the few exceptions to the SEC regulations around securities. Um, we've been pretty careful to stay out of the US so far because the regulators there are a little bit more scrupulous. Um, the rest of the world, though, seems to have absolutely no issue with what we're doing. And for the most part, uh, the Koi token itself and the way that it's mined is very similar to Bitcoin or any other kind of mining operation. So it's pretty reasonable from all of those standpoints. Um, the more exciting part, though, is when you get into actually running a task in the background of a mobile app, like kind of what I was talking about before, um, that's actually like a way of paying your app fees with your compute capacity. So rather than having to pay a membership fee for an app in order to have it ad free, you just provide a little bit of computing. Um, in those cases, then it's not even really, um, it's not like you're earning money for it. So you've got this very interesting tax situation that can happen with these like pure utility situations. Um, not financial advice, obviously, I'm not an expert, but uh, yeah, it definitely seems like it's staying out of any gray area. We've talked to a lot of very extremely smart lawyers who seem to think that's going to happen. And also, I mean, I took away the idea of you staying out of outside of the United States as one of the keys right there. Uh, it seems like that's a pretty good idea for a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, blockchain based uh, companies uh, currently with the environment. So that that alone makes a lot of sense. I, I didn't do the best job. Let me do a better job here. You mentioned exciting economics. Can you just dive a little bit deeper into the exciting economics? I know you touched on it and you were, but I can't just let that pass like that easily. Okay, so uh, breaking it down a little bit more, the way the internet works is this call right now, this, this space that we're on, is going through an x.com server somewhere. Um, that server is a computer, and its whole job is to send information back and forth between you know, my phone and your phone um, so that we can listen in on this space or your computer, whatever you're using. So that means that at the end of the day, they have to cover the cost of that server somehow, right? Which... You know, I mentioned the Netflix thing before where they're buying all of the DMs off the Facebook side. So like when the market gets bad and Facebook stock goes down, they have to get more revenue. How do they get revenue? Well, they have all this data, right? Um, and they need to pay for all these computers and all these people. And so they have to sell the data. And that's the really big privacy problem on the internet at the end of the day. Um, and the other way to fix that is to have a lot more computers. You need, you need free computers or you need participating computers that are part of the economic model in a way that's a little bit cheaper or where people are kind of willfully contributing a computer without having to like have a massive cost associated with it. Um, but what it means long-term is that we can have a whole bunch of people providing uh, a device that the network can run on. And so instead of this call going through an X.com server, it could go through 50,000 coin nodes and it could be denominated in like a space token. And everybody who runs the node would get some space tokens. And then if we wanted to host a space, we might have to put up some space tokens. Um, but the trade-off with that is that we wouldn't need to have our data harvested and we wouldn't need to see ads. Um, and so our experience would be a lot cleaner. Um, and of course, maybe if you don't put up space tokens and you still have to watch some ads or something like that, but um, makes it very interesting. At least in that case, too, you're paying these people who are providing computers instead of paying some large company. That was a fantastic breakdown. I like how you brought us kind of right into the exciting economics in the space so we could understand it. I think anybody that listens to this not live uh, will take away from that soundbite uh, a good amount right there because that was really well done. I appreciate it. Let's take a second to just remind everyone you are listening to the Koi Foundation. Uh, recently crossed over 50,000 nodes. Uh, we just heard there are over 52,000 nodes running, operating. Uh, it sounds like growth has been very quick, especially recently. So it's a credit to the team. Uh, and they've just started a marketing push, which we're recognizing now. Uh, and so this is definitely one of the projects if you're not involved in. Uh, something you want to learn about, you can earn while learning. Uh, you can participate very quickly, very easily. Uh, we've pinned above uh, the easiest way for you to learn how to download your node today and get that information rolling. So right here in the conversation while listening uh, to Al, uh, the founder, you can not just hear a ton about Koi, but you can get involved. So make sure to check out that uh, pinned post above. It's also in the chat box. Now, if you're listening and you have a specific question you want to ask Al or you're curious about, you can definitely put that in the chat as well in the bottom right. And of course, make sure you're following Al and the Koi Foundation so that uh, you're not missing future stuff. Now, Al, I've got to say, when I tell people to follow Koi Foundation and yourself, it looks like your account was just created, what, last month? 
Yeah, I uh, I got shadow banned from Twitter about two months ago. So unfortunately, unlike Taco, I haven't had the time to go to SF and uh, negotiate for my account back. So this is my new one. Hey, t- Taco, I, you know what was that negotiation like? Let's uh, let's hear about it. Uh, so I drove to San Francisco, bought tacos on a Tuesday, and I delivered tacos to XHQ and met with their community team. End of story. Tacos hey, saved the world. What? Just what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, nobody does a better job promoting their own brand than taco right there and there's a little little uh you know idea right there al when you uh want to get unshadow banned if you don't want to have to have this new account you might want to employ taco for his taco tuesday strategy in the x account uh headquarters uh, all right there's always a good time for some jokes uh you love them if you missed the first uh, uh, oh, never mind sorry go ahead michael no i'm gonna pause here it's your turn, bro. Talk. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to save everyone from your bad joke. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I guess I wanted to, uh, to kind of ask uh, ask Al here about um, the marketing approach for Koi, I guess. So I, I've i been doing a little research on Koi. I've, I've, I unfortunately haven't had enough to do the deep dive I've been wanting to do. But um, when it comes to marketing yourself, like as the, as like an, you know, AI GPU compute deep in, I'm, I'm noticing that you, y'all aren't, you know, you're not going the typical like gaming route, which I'm like really kind of happy about because like, obviously gaming's fun and I, I love, you know, obviously I love playing video games, but I just, I don't know. I, I'm really, I'm, I'm happy that you guys aren't going down that route because I feel like it's getting saturated. And so I guess, what was your, what was your decision to go the more like the, the, your decision behind uh, going more like generic, not generic, but like more general route in the GPU compute space? Yeah. So this is, um, I guess, partially an exercise of masochism uh, and most likely it's rooted in the kind of core economics of the thing. Um, it's actually, that's a bad joke. It is very much rooted in the core economics. Um, we, we want, billions of people around the world to have the opportunity to join Koi and provide a device. Um, without that, the platform for creating these very interesting economic situations is not as interesting, and it doesn't provide the same basis for new search engines and things like that to grow. Um, especially when you look at social networks, the, uh, the demographics of the people who are running nodes become really important because I don't want to run a, um, a social network where my node operators are a very specific type of person. I want a broader community of people that anybody who uses my app can understand it and then also go and run a node that provides the back end, right? Um, and so what we're trying to provide with Koi is a wide enough group of people. So if you launch a new social network, a search engine, a new AI tool, if you're launching an NFT community, uh, whatever it is that you're doing, there's a community of people out there who will run that node for you and who will do it for your token, which is the exciting part. Um, and it's that relationship that we're trying to foster. So the... Uh, getting the big GPUs isn't actually as valuable to us upfront. Um, the other thing that we did find along the way is uh, once you have these node operators committed to your cause, they will go and buy a GPU to run for your, for your project uh, if they really care. And so it's more about the connection with the, the person and being able to make it possible for that connection between you and the node operator, as opposed to trying to find somebody with the right computer that you need. Um, Cause once you find the person, then they can get any computer that's needed as, as shown by hive mapper and all these projects that have uh, custom hardware. Okay. Yeah, no, that's, that, I mean, that's excellent, honestly. And just to add to that, um, just to kind of give an idea of how quickly I was able to set a note up to the audience. I literally like during this conversation have just downloaded the note and started. So <laughs> it was really easy guys. Seriously, just click the link, make an account, get started. Really, really simple. That's awesome to hear. I appreciate that you actually did it during the call. It's always the hardest part is to get people to click the button for some reason. Um, and once that happens, then it's a piece of cake. My 90 year old grandmother actually ran, is running a coin out and she did kind of the same thing where she's very hesitant to click the button. Uh, she asked a lot of questions and then when she finally clicked the button, it took like five minutes. Um, I think that's, that's the other side of this is like we're catering to a very non-technical audience. Um, so our goal here is to build communities of people around the world, not to try to get every single person who's a developer on board. Uh, when we were running this think tank in Chicago, a lot of what we did uh, in terms of educating people centered around trying to get people to run Bitcoin and Ethereum nodes, especially Ethereum, because uh, the guy who put up the money for the Institute, uh, Taylor Gehring, some of the early Ethereum guys, T. Gehring is one of the big board ape guys. Um, he, he was very keen to try to get people to run ETH nodes. And it just didn't really work. 
you know, we, we told so many people how to run an ETH node. And at the time, it was very difficult to require some command line knowledge. You had to set up like uh, port forwarding on your router. And that kind of stuff just it eventually stops people. It's like, you know, somebody will go through one hard part and then they'll give up. Um, and if you go through more than two hard parts and it's a sketchy product, the the kind of uh, the incentives don't work out. You know, it's too hard, you're not enough rewards, and why would I do this? And then you just give up halfway through. Um, and after about a half an hour, most people will not even try it. Uh, even after about 10 minutes, most people will give up. So what we've kind of been trying to do is make it so, so easy that anybody can participate. And then what we want to do is empower a whole bunch of people to launch these projects on Koi and then give them the marketing budget. Go find your community that wants this token that you're offering and we'll help them spread the word. Um, so I'm really excited that once we launch the token in about a month, uh, that we'll be able to get a ton of those people on board, which should be pretty amazing. I wanted to give the space a, a second to breathe right there because that was a lot to digest uh, for, for everyone, and that was uh, a really good breakdown. Uh, we're going to continue uh, with a little bit more. It's a little bit technical here or there, but I love it. And as Will said, he downloaded, and he's already running a node. I think he's already in the top, what, 50,000 Koi uh, node operators. William, congratulations. If you guys want to join the way that William did, remember, you can go to the top or in the chat, and you can find uh, the pin post from the Koi Foundation. Make sure you're following their account to continue to learn more even after this conversation with Al is finished. Scott, we got you back here, I think, right? Yeah. Hey, yeah, Al, I just had a question for you. I know we talked about this a few times, but I wanted to, you know, share with the audience. Um, you know, what what is the barrier you feel, you know, going, you know, you're killing in that 50,000? What's it going to take to get to, like, you know, that mass million where where everybody's talking about Koi? Um, you, you, is, it, is it, you know, the organic you know, guerrilla marketing that, you know, that we do on spaces with D-Pin. Um, like, what do you see? I mean, you don't have to give too much of your marketing sauce out, out but uh, just curious, you know, uh, what's the next step of really blowing this thing out of the water? Yeah, there's, there's not much sauce to it, honestly. Um, the thing that we've been focused mostly on uh, is that product really sells. So the big difference between uh, what we looked like when we were at a thousand nodes and where we're at now is that we made the time to onboard about two minutes shorter. Um, so that means that out of the people who actually install the app, like 80% more people will finish the onboarding process. Um, similar to that, we also are really focused on making it easier for developers to use this to build their projects. Um, and so we're working really hard on actually making that part incredibly simple. Um, and then from there, I think the, uh, the projects built on Koi will actually drive the next wave of onboarding. Uh, we're not in a huge rush to expand the network. You know, people who get in early, you know, welcome. This is, this is for you. Um, but it's really, uh, it's mostly about building up the right founders and the right teams to build the Koi ecosystem. So we're not actually in a huge rush to get to like a million nodes right away. It's more about building it in a stable way so the tokenomics work out well for everybody. Um, if we had a million nodes right now, we, we have lots of cool tasks that I can think of doing with them, but that would mean giving out a lot of Koi tokens. So I'd much rather bring in some amazing founders and get them to, you know, tell these nodes what to do themselves uh, rather than us just running it all top down. I think uh, I think Scott's having some technical difficulties. He's having to come back uh, up to the stage and back down and whatnot. This, this New York weather is unforgiving, but a uh, uh, great explanation there, Al. You know, while Scott is, is reconnecting or not, I, I've been thinking about this for a little bit here because, you know, earlier, Al, you talked about how you were slimming down the Koi team and, uh, you know, members of the of Koi uh, were building out their own kind of projects on, si on top of the L1. And that got me thinking, what is it that you personally, are you excited about one of these kind of uh, newer projects that's going to be built with Koi on top of it? Or is there something that's exciting you there that's kind of getting spun off? Yeah, I mean, there's a few categories of this. Um, one of the big ones that I'm the most excited about is messaging. Um, messaging and like social type apps. There's actually no messaging protocol right now that isn't monitored. So even if you use Signal or something like that, you're still being monitored by like a variety of defense departments around the world. Um, and the reason they can do that is because there's entry points, there's servers that actually transmit all the information back and forth. So your IP address can always be tracked. Um, and in, in the West, this isn't as big of a problem, but it is even rapidly growing. Like Canada is now censoring content off of like social networks, which is crazy. Um, I live in Canada at the moment, and I always thought that, that would, that's like a dystopian future that would never happen here, but it's quickly happening. 
Um, I think as the economic situation around the world gets more and more tense, we're going to see more and more of this kind of censorship and oversight. Um, and so VPNs and things like that will be very, very important. And so there's like a, there's a Spartacus level of penetration where if you get enough people to run a node like this, then it becomes almost impossible to identify who is using it uh, to do what. And so then we, as a community, all have anonymity on the internet, uh, which is sort of what they try to do with things like Tor, but it uh, ultimately doesn't really work that well for small groups because you can just monitor the people who are participating. Um, so what we'd like to get to is social networks where everything is encrypted end to end and no one can tell what you're saying and to who, um, which I think is in a big way the solution to fixing democracy. Um, that and so, like good enough search engines to actually process that information because then you can find the content that's applicable to you without having to depend on like a news feed to tell you what to think. Yeah, I could see it. I like it. Uh, makes a lot of sense. Messaging, uh, important kind of owning your stuff and not having people able to see it important. Um, are, are you, are you working alongside and I'll go to you, Scott, in a sec. I just want to follow up. Are you working with some of these other kind of projects out, you know, at some level of maybe advisory or anything to help them get rolling, you know, outside of necessarily Koi itself? Yeah. Anything that's kind of, uh, even loosely related to Koi, I try to help out where I can. Um, it is a little difficult to split my time because I probably work about 12 or 16 hours a day on the Koi side right now. But uh, one thing that we set up recently is Koi Garden, which is like kind of our internal accelerator incubator side of things. Um, and it's actually, it's open to anybody, even they're not building on Koi. And the idea is to give them a chance to build something that's decentralized and extremely powerful. So uh, whenever I do get a chance to come out to conferences, I'm not making it to NFTMYC this week, but uh, it's usually what I'm looking for. And I try to get all the hackathons and just meet a ton of people who can help. Because ultimately, that's the, the really fun part. Um, we also, at the uh, the main Koi office here in Canada, we have this uh, sort of amazing community of hackers that come in regularly. Um, and the number of cool products that they're building is pretty staggering. So I spend a lot of time trying to coach those kinds of people and help them uh, figure out the right technical solutions. Um, the, the cool thing about Web3 is that there's a, a pretty common tech stack across all these new applications. So once you understand cryptography pretty well and you understand, like, um, kind of how encryption works and how you can handle like VPN style routing, then you don't actually really need uh, a lot of other tools. You just need more computers to work with. So that's sort of, that's sort of how we approach this. We try to build that whole stack for people. And now we're just trying to find like really innovative hackers and founders that want to take it to the next level. Yeah, makes a ton of, makes a ton of sense. Uh, yeah, Taco. Al, are, are, do you still talk about the dynamic NFT stuff? A bit, a bit. Um, we haven't built a lot of them lately because we haven't had a lot of time. Um, but the Atomic NFT standard is still out there. It's published on our web. Uh, works pretty well. And there's a few other uh, kind of similar dynamic NFT type ideas. We had the uh, the Atomic Zombies on our web, but it seems like the actual media assets that we put on our web have started to disappear off of our web, which is kind of disturbing. Um, so the zombies are like literally digitally rotting now and you're losing body parts, which is kind of hilarious. But um, that project for the people that aren't read up on it was, uh, the idea was that you had these, uh, these zombie NFTs that this guy decline built. Um, and you would get like a randomized assortment of different zombie gear and you'd get like a different hat or something like that. And then they changed over time, depending on how much attention they got. Um, and that was actually like, it was an innovative part of the core thing. Cause you could do this in a trustless way, uh, like completely decentralized on Koi. There was no centralized components at all. It's an incredible tech marvel that we were able to pull this off. Um, but yeah, the, yeah, we've assets seem to keep disappearing, which is a little disappointing. Yeah, it, it was one of the really interesting things that always drove, really drove me to Koi, you know, when we first met, was the dynamic NFT side of things. And this really isn't a question, more of just a statement. Um, you know, especially around the proof of concepts of proof of attention, where things should have value, not based off of, you know, what someone says the value is, but how much attention does it get? Um, and your proof case of your, your narcissistic, uh, narcissist flower, you know, uh, the more attention it got, the more views it would grow and blossom. And if it didn't get attention, you know, it would die. Uh, you know, it brings apart the idea of a Schrodinger's cat, you know, like if, if no one's looking at it, how do you know it actually died? But you had that data because you were doing that dynamic data piece to it. So um, I would love to see more of what you're doing in that, you know? Yeah, we could definitely do something there. Um, I think the, the attention mining start, side of things, like attention tracking, if people don't know, is a huge component of how the internet economy works. So like 
even right now, uh, there's a tracking pixel on the app that you're using to listen to the space or on the website. Um, and that tracking pixel is sending off information about you like every instant. Um, and those creep me out, frankly, because it's like you're getting spied on and there's no choice because if you open the Twitter website, then you get spied on. And it's like, that's the deal when you open Twitter. Um, and that's how they target you with ads. And that's, you know, that's how every website pretty much works. Um, so we built this thing that does that in a decentralized way using coin nodes. Um, and it's completely anonymous. So nobody can tell who you are. We just have uh, an anonymous person who's watching some content and then we're able to serve you ads based on what kind of content you're looking at. It's really cool. Um, and the first proof of concept of that was this narcissist flower that Taco was talking about, which, uh, yeah, that was a really fun project. I hacked that out like three days. And we what we ended up doing is we took a GIF of a flower opening and uh, split it out into like 500 frames. And then depending on how much attention it got, the, uh, the frames would change. So you'd get this flower that would actually open as people looked at it. And we did that. I don't know if Taco, you were at the garden party event that we did where there were like 500 people watching. And every time that somebody came to the page uh, to watch the event, the flower would open a little bit more. Um, and it, like, it actually bloomed in front of us. It's kind of incredible. Um, yeah, th those were the fun days. Uh, it was the early hacking days of Koi. We were trying to figure out what to do back in like 2021. I think we've got a little bit clearer focus now on the deep end stuff. And like we've kind of, we figured out how to present the tech framework to developers, but we definitely would love to get back into those kinds of things. If anyone wants to build a, a dynamic NFT, they should definitely reach out to us. We'd love to help. And that rolls into like what, you know, you, perfect segue because Koi is not just its own standalone creature. Koi is actually trying to be out there to, to help other projects grow too. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's a toolkit, right? Um, there's certain things that you need for a, a web app to work properly. So like I mentioned, attention tracking and tracking pixels, that's like a, it's a cryptography standard that we provide now. Um, we have a storage standard coming out next week, which is pretty cool. And we've got uh, now peer-to-peer -peer communications with the, um, with the libraries that we've built out for the node now as well. Uh, so you can get coin nodes to all talk to each other. And then like you can have a mobile app that talks to a bunch of coin nodes as the back end for the app, which is like absolutely astounding if you think about it. It's like, you know, your mobile app is suddenly just talking to all these computers around the world and there's no like coordination to it. It just sort of happens. It's like everybody will pitch in to get you the information you're looking for. Um, and we, we did a lot of this, I mean, like huge credit to uh, Juan and the team over at Filecoin. Like they built a lot of this out with IPFS in the early days. Um, what we've tried to do is to extend the kind of core functionality behind IPFS and libp2p and then actually make it uh, directly useful for people. So we've taken a lot of inspiration from that and then tried to make it um, almost like a template that people can use. And so what we're releasing over the next few months is uh, effectively templates that let you do everything from a storage coin to a compute coin um, and all the way up. So you, as like a community member, can come to us and say, hey, I want to launch this NFT or this token, and I'd like to create this whole economy with it. Um, and we'll have a whole bunch of different templates that make it really easy to do that. Uh, and you can launch your token with utility from day one. So you're not like, you know, a lot of these projects launch a token and then like a while later, then they have utility. Um, the way this would work is you launch the token, and then at the same time, you already have utility for it, which is pretty cool. Very cool. Hey. Yeah, Taco, appreciate the uh, the follow-on right there, that which you let on there uh, was really uh, helpful. Um, all right, so we get a little bit longer here, and I wanted to make sure that if anybody else had questions, per se, comments, uh, you know, experiences that they want to share. It's a great opportunity for you to do that right now. You can do that right in the bottom right. You can put a, a note in there. You could come up and, and share. Uh, uh, otherwise, make sure that you, again, have, uh, have tapped into the potential to get a Koi node. Uh, William got one on the space. You can, too, if you're listening to this. It takes less than five minutes. Uh, it's uh, very simple, and you can be part of the really growing uh, community that's being built. We've heard uh, a, a number of different uh, exciting developments from Al, and the growth has been pretty substantial more recently based on uh, some of the metrics and numbers, which is awesome as well. Um, you know, I, I, I'd love to ask you a question on my end in closing, uh, Al. Well, like, I'm going to throw this to, to Will and Scott if you have any closing things, but just, you know, Al, I, don't, I mean, when you think about blockchain, and now we obviously are, you know, we, we're talking deep in a lot, 
and we're really focused on that uh, here uh, in this area of Wolf Web 3. But, uh, you know, you tap into the AI set, and that's really hot right now. Uh, where do you kind of think all of this is in the bigger scheme of kind of uh, the world? Like, is this kind of the trend that's going to be hot right now, in your opinion, and it's only going to grow? Do you think this is kind of like, uh, this is a trend that's going to cool off and pick back up in, in a year, two years? What, what do you kind of like over overarching theme think about when you when you you know think about where we are in 2024 understanding kind of crypto blockchain uh and, and just the world how, how do you kind of look at it like from a, a higher level so um i mentioned like came in around 2016 um and before that i was really interested in deep end, so i actually built out a mesh wi-fi grid in 2015 um and that didn't have a token so it was like helium but no token we just we had like an ads economy on top of it that allowed us to pay for it all um, the thing that people are, I think, maybe missing with Deepin is that blockchain was already Deepin, like prior to it being called blockchain. Um, when you when you have a payment processor that runs on like I think Bitcoin's at like hundreds of thousands or millions of computers now, um, that that is a Deepin network that processes payments. That's exactly what that is. Um, and then if you take that a step further, if you look at like the decentralization of RPC endpoints with things like Lava. Um, that is also a DeFi network, and a lot of these were around like in 2017, 2018, 2019. Um, the thing now that's happening is people have taken the concept of sharding in a whole new direction. So the original kind of sharding that was happening with Ethereum was you would take Ethereum as an L1, as a blockchain, and then you would shard the execution of consensus amongst different nodes. So you had a whole bunch of nodes, but they were all Ethereum nodes, and they would all do the same job at different levels so that they could put together like this global consensus of the network. Um, and we've noticed that, that that's kind of working now. Like they've almost got it kind of rolling, but it's still having some serious hiccups. Um, and the thing that I think people have noticed with Deepin is the easier way to do this is kind of more like what Cosmos is doing, where you have uh, specific chains that do one thing each. Um, but even that is not actually that great because what you're talking about then is a whole bunch of chains, and then there's also this group of like worker nodes that go do compute workloads. Um, and so what I think we're starting to see with Deepin is that instead of having a global state machine like Ethereum where everybody agrees on the global state or having a bunch of little state machines like Cosmos, what we can do instead is we can have just a kind of fractured, uh, fractal sort of state where it's very modular and everybody has their own device that does some workloads for other devices and everybody kind of agrees on who everybody else is and what they've contributed so far, but there's no like global hierarchy. Um, and I think that's ultimately where this is all headed because that's what nature looks like. Nature doesn't have like a global state machine that says everybody do this. It, it just has everybody doing things, and then we all end up working together to get the thing we want. Um, and I think that's ultimately where Deepin is now taking us, where like you don't need to recruit an RPC provider and a blockchain provider and a hosting company for your website and all these things. You just put up a new token, and then you go out to the world and you say, hey, I need somebody to host my website, provide RPC, run my smart contracts, I need somebody else to do bridging. And then all of these devices come to you who have all the things you need and they provide those things for you. Um, that's kind of, that's what we're trying to take it anyways, is standardizing all these individual components. Um, but I think ultimately the competitive market for that is going to lead to there being just an enormous number of these market-driven solutions that allow you to get the best solution or the best service at the lowest price from people you trust. And that's going to completely change how the internet works because right now it's just a monopoly where we basically pay a couple of people to run all the computers and then they have complete control of all of our information. Um, so this new version is going to be significantly better. And I just kind of hope it happens in time. Um, we have a big US election coming up. Uh, there's one in Canada too. There's a whole, like, I think like half of the world has an election this fall. Um, like half the world's population, like 4 billion people have an election this fall. And it's kind of scary because the way the internet is now, it's extremely good at getting a certain message out and making sure that other messages don't get out. Um, it only takes a few cycles of government to sort of wipe out all of the good candidates because you can just kind of silence their voices now. Uh, it's not to say that that's necessarily happening, but it's certainly possible that it could. And so the, the new internet, the DPIN networks, can actually fix a lot of that. Uh, not only can you fix that, but you can also like fix climate change and hunger and all kinds of other amazing things because we just have the data now. Um, once you have the data, then you can start to make better decisions. Data is everything. I know I've learned that over my years. Uh, I'll be watching these elections as they come up and paying attention to this even more so and trying to see how it all kind of plays out. So I appreciate uh, that answer and, uh, and and you spending some time with us. Scott, William, uh, you know, kind of final questions, thoughts here? Yeah, oh man, it's been a great space. I really appreciate you 
pulling up and you know i don't gotta say how much bullish on koi is there any alpha any partnerships any anything that you might not have uh uh you know said out loud yet that you can share for us um i can't name names but we've secured now uh one of the top market makers in the space and uh, a whole bunch of the top exchanges uh so it's going to be an absolute bull run for the next like three months while we list and get all the tokens out to everybody um and then on top of koi now we've got something like 25 people that have committed to launching tokens or bridging tokens over from other networks uh many of whom are like many hundred million dollar uh token like FEBs, so those will all be bridging their tokens over using coin nodes to actually distribute the tokens. Um, it's going to be a lot of activity. Uh, so the, I guess the real alpha is run a coin node because then you'll have coin tokens, which you can use to pay for gas fees to mine all of these other tokens that are coming to coin. Um, and it really just starts with uh, getting that node running on your computer right now, which takes literally five minutes. Literally five minutes, guys. As you've heard, when you're literally, to this, literally five minutes. Yeah. William's already earning. He set it up and he's rolling. William. Yeah, I was just going to say, man, like I, I loved learning about more about Koi in this space, dude. Like I mean, great questions from Scott and, and you, Michael, like just freaking fantastic. Dude. I was really happy just to listen along. And I honestly just, yeah, dude, th this is huge. And just like, just like Al said, I mean, the, the need for compute is only going to just scale higher and higher. Like, it's going to be like, it's just going to increase because data is just becoming more and more relevant in this modern tech world that we live in. And I just think it's it's never going to really go away. You're just going to need more and more and more. Thus, the need for compute, the need for computing power, is just going to ever increase. I feel like I feel like to infinity almost, right? Not not to be dramatic, but it's just like it's never not going to be there. And, it's, and if anything, it's it's never going to it's it's never going to go down unless like we all lose power and the internet goes away forever, right? Like. <laughs> So actually, truly, it does increase forever because as far as we know, the universe is infinite. And so uh, as a civilization, we need to go and learn more about that universe. And that means looking at the bottom of the ocean, looking at the tiniest molecule and looking at the farthest star. And all of that information is useful to us. And it's just a matter of making it navigable to an individual. Because right now, it's only navigable to like, you know, the president of the United States, who may or may not know about the aliens or whatever actually caused COVID. And there's like all of these things that may be known by some really powerful person, but the rest of us have no idea. Um, and the true power of the internet is that we all can tell each other that kind of information. We can curate it on our own devices. So there's no censorship, which uh, we're very close, which is kind of cool. Are you saying that, are you saying that if I download Koi, I can learn more about the, the aliens? I can find the truth about the aliens? We together will find the truth eventually. Um, and when we do, we'll be able to disseminate it without anybody stopping us, which is the more important part. You, you heard it here first. You heard it here first, folks. You heard it here first. It sounds like it, it sounds like a koi pond may be the place that you should be staring from now on. William, you know, you could always create a task within the koi network to like search through data on UFOs and everything like that for that proof. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, guys, this has been super fun. Now I'm going to go look at this koi pond, see if I find aliens. They're probably still just going to be the koi, the fish. Look, we've had a fantastic hour here with Al, the Koi Foundation. If you haven't followed him, you need to. Make sure to, to follow Koi, Al. Don't let him get shadow banned again. Don't make him do extra work with tacos. Uh, but you know what, Al, listen, I hope you come join us again on Wednesdays for our routine deep in hour uh, space because we've been uh, sharing uh, a ton and we're going to continue to monitor what's going on inside of Koi alongside other ecosystem projects and uh, we'd love to have you participate so we hope that you'll join us again you are the guest today so I want to give you just a final thought or you know final comment here before we wrap it up with Charles taking it away and again shout out to the speakers to the to the listeners Scott William we couldn't do this without uh, them it's been a little bit challenging just from New York but have a great time at NFT NYC every one uh you know make your connections have a good time and, and last word to you al oh big privilege um koi dot garden uh dot network is where you get the node but dot garden is where you get access to all of our founder support programs so if there's anybody listening to this who's building something and wants to like maybe search the koi pond for ufos or whatever it is uh that's where you contact us to get funding and support and all that kind of thing uh we'd love to hear from you and yeah thanks for having me on guys we'll definitely join next week Thank you. Yeah, Charles, take us home. 
Yeah, thank you guys so much. I appreciate y'all. And Al, thank you for coming from Koi and uh, giving us your insights. Dude, you got a depth. That's awesome. And thank you for bringing it to the panel and bringing it to the audience here. And I just want to thank the speakers in the audience that, that come and do this thing. Michael, Scott, William, Taco, you know, everybody else that joined uh, earlier. We couldn't do this without speakers, and we can't do this without audience. So thank you guys so much for coming. We are Wolf Web 3. We host genre agnostic shows, and hopefully we'll give you more value than you came in with. And everybody have a wonderful day, and we appreciate you all. <laughs>